What is the goal of today's daily vlog? Number one, teach you one thing, YouTube, teach you one thing. And number two, to get healthy, which means, what does that mean? It means I, I must attempt to get 12 hours of sleep tonight, which the sun is gonna be down in about two hours. I've got to go to bed early and I've got to sleep 12 hours to get rid of this sickness. That's the only way I've decided that this is gonna go away. I did not sleep well last night. I don't know what happened. I think maybe it was because I took a little cat nap after dinner. Anyway, that is the goal, the two goals for today. Teach you one thing, the runner's knot, and to go to bed early so I can defeat the sickness. All right, we've got the Zantes here, the New Balance Zantes, bright neon green, gotta love that. And then you've got the black Nike Vimero 14. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the shoelaces out of the Zantes right here, and I'm gonna put the shoelaces into the Vimero 14s uh, so that you can see the contrast of the bright neon green against the black of the Vimero 14s. And then we will analyze exactly how you tie a runner's knot. So let me get these out real quick for you. Have you ever heard of the runner's knot? Maybe you have, maybe you have not. There's a lot of new runners on this channel, people that are just getting into running. If so, you probably have not heard of this knot. Maybe somebody at a running shoe store has taught you about how to tie this knot. That's where I, I actually at the runner's roost on Colorado Boulevard in Denver, Colorado, 20 years ago, somebody working the floor taught me the runner's knot. So if you don't know it, if nobody's ever taught it to you, you won't, you won't know how to do it and why you should do it. So. I like, I lean in the direction of a snug fit for my shoe. I like to feel pretty secure in the shoe. Now, I sometimes go too tight and I have to stop, uh, you know, maybe like once or twice a month, I have to stop in the middle of my run and loosen my shoe just because I went a little too snug. But overall, I like a snugger fit through the shoe and especially in the heel, especially on the trails. Like when you're going up and down steep trails, you do not want any slipping happening in the heel. The runner's knot, basically what it allows you to do is cinch, C-I-N-C-H, cinch down with the shoelaces, the back of your shoe through the heel. So with all running shoes, you have eyelets going up the side of the running shoe right through here. And basically these eyelets is what the shoelace goes through. And then you work your way up the shoelace, lacing the shoes, until you get to the last two holes at the top of the eyelet chain. So those last two holes you wanna save. Don't put the shoelaces through yet. Basically, you're gonna cross over one more time to the second to last eyelet with the end of the shoelace, put it through, and now, instead of going back across the shoe with the rest of the shoelace, you're gonna to wanna to string it through the last eyelet at the very top on the same side. And then what is that gonna create? It's gonna create a loop at the top of your eyelet chain. This loop is what's gonna allow you to cinch down your shoelaces so you can have a snug fit through your heel. Once you have created both loops at the top of the eyelet chain on both sides of the shoe, you're gonna take the extra shoelace that's left. There's, you know, there's probably gonna be four or five inches and you're gonna send it across the shoe to the other side and yes, thread it through the loop that you just created on the other side of the shoe. Do that on one side and then go across to the other side. So what you've just created with these two loops is a basically a pulley system where you're creating tension between both sides of the shoe that allow you to cinch down slowly, don't go too tight, 
but cinch down slowly so that what's gonna happen is these shoelaces are gonna pull the back of the shoe toward the front of the shoe. And that's gonna create that nice snug feel through the heel so that you don't feel any slipping happening through the heel. Because you really, that's like the worst is when your heel is coming up just a little bit in the back of your shoe. And that is the runner's knot. And then of course, at the very end, once you have cinched down and you feel like you're secure, you can finish off tying the shoe like you normally would. And then you're nice, and don't forget to double knot now, tip of the day, don't forget to double knot. So that is the runner's knot. And I know it's kind of hard to describe through words and images through a video. If you were here in person, it'd be a lot easier, but I'm telling you, I've been doing this knot for 20 years and I love it, and I, I use it for all my shoes, my trail shoes, my road shoes, my racing shoes. And it just creates a slightly extra snug feel through, especially through the heel, which I love. And it, honestly, I think it helps me actually stay off of my heels when I'm racing because it, it kind of forces you up on your toes a little bit because you're just nice and locked down, that nice lockdown feel. And the question of the day, do you use the runner's knot? Have you ever heard of the runner's knot? If you have not heard of the runner's knot, will you try it? And if you do, let me know down in the comments. I'd appreciate it. Oh man, I just I had I had to come outside and get some fresh air. Being sick and cooped up inside for the last two days or whatever, it's like oh, you just gotta breathe it in, breathe it in. Oh, nothing like fresh air. Okay, guys, I was sick a couple days ago, and so I forgot. I'm still sick, but I forgot the comment of the week, and so here we go. This is from uh, Turkish Churros. <laughs> nice name, I like that. And this is in connection to yesterday's question of the day about who is your favorite runner of all time. And this is what he said. I was going I was going to say Kipchoge or Steve Prefontaine, but when you mentioned hometown heroes, I immediately thought of my high school coach, Daryl General. He was a 214 marathoner, and he tied a record by qualifying for five consecutive Olympic trials, which means he was highly competitive for almost two whole decades. His entire career, he worked three jobs, including coaching at a local high school. I was lucky enough to have him as my coach, and without his influence, I would not still be running today. He wasn't the fastest or most famous runner of all time, but he is my favorite runner of all time. Thank you so much. You get the comment of the week, Turkish Chiro, and gosh, I mean, that's what it's all about. Stories inspiring stories, stories impacting stories, and it's pretty neat that Daryl impacted your story, so thank you for sharing about his life and his journey within this sport that we all love, and uh, guys, I'm calling it, I'm biting the bullet. It pains me sometimes to publish vlogs that are maybe not as uh, entertaining to watch. Let's just put it that way. I hope you learned something though with the runner's knots, you know, especially for all the uh, maybe newer runners out there that have not uh, ever been told about the runner's knot and not been taught how to tie it. So if you struggle with tying it, let me know down in the comments and I'll try and walk you through it. But um, I love you and I'm calling it and we're going to, we're going to bed soon once the sun goes down because Oh man, I need that. I need like at least 12 hours of sleep tonight. Oh my goodness. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Thanks for being here. See you tomorrow. Mm.